This video is going to be about the history of cataract surgery, and if you like videos that do a deep investigation and show that what's in the history books is not correct and things need to be reinterpreted, then you'll enjoy this video. It does have some new evidence that was just found in 2023 and does a detailed analysis of the evidence that was already out there. And it's entitled the first planned cataract extraction from the posterior chamber by delivery of the lens which Jacques Davielle documented was performed on September 18, 1750. So ophthalmology underwent a transition from couching to extraction beginning in the middle of the 1700s. Now since the time of Jesus cataract surgery was performed by couching which is pushing the cataract or opacified lens into the back of the eye. By pushing the lens out of the visual axis, you allow the patient to see. But Jacques Davielle brought us sort of into the modern era in the middle of the 1700s by performing cataract extraction. And here is a, a photo of removal of the entire opacified lens or cataract. And when you remove it from the eye, it can't float back up into the visual axis. And that's one of the main advantages of extraction as opposed to couching. But when did Jacques Davielle actually do this procedure for the first time? In the literature, you'll see dates from 1745 all the way up to 1752 when he presented the technique. And you'll see just about every year in between. There seems to be a lot of confusion about when Jacques Davielle actually performed this procedure. And wouldn't we want to know when the first one was performed? And the new evidence that we're going to look at shows that he actually performed cataract extraction for the first time that can be documented on September 18, 1750. And the confusion that's in the literature stems from the fact that Daviel changed his story when he was challenged for priority by Natalie Pellucci, who is an Italian surgeon who lived in Paris, among others. So this newspaper report here was just found um, in 2023, and we just simply found it by, by Googling for it. And it was from the Regensburg newspaper of September 30th, 1750. And the translation is, the French oculist Daviel, who is currently operating at Cologne, surpasses all of his colleagues in a certain way that he does not press down the cataracts with a round or flat needle like others do, but pulls them completely out of the globe and takes away that corpus mortuum without the eye suffering the slightest damage. He proved a true and happy trial on a Franciscan father of Liège, Egidius Nuprez, and put the cataract into the hands of the doctors who were present at the operation. And Egidius is the Latin word for goat. The Dutch word for goat is gil. And this same cataract extraction is reported in an unpublished manuscript written in Daviel's hand sometime after 1752. And the manuscript was just discovered in 2004. And it reports that in, in Cologne, uh, Daviel first experiment with, with cataract extraction on a sheep in the presence of the faculty. And then on September 18, 1750, Daviel extracted the cataract of Gilles Nuprez of Limbourg, which is in Liège, with the outcome listed as bien réussi or successful. And then we know about this same case a third time from the presentation that Jacques Daviel made in November of 1752 to the Academy of Surgery. And he's talking about when he first started performing cataract extraction. And he says, I had the occasion to visit Liège and stayed there several days. I performed six operations by this method with the best of success. One that I did at Cologne on a monk was an even more striking success as the cataract was soft like jelly. However, the monk was in a state to say the mass 15 days after the operation. And that translation is by Pierce in 1967. And the original French um, was a religieux, so a religious figure, not, not really a monk. So we know of this report from three different sources. 
So if that's the case, why is there such confusion in the literature and why do you hear dates from 1745 onward in the literature about when Jacques Davielle did this surgery? Well, let's start in 1745 and talk about what was happening with Jacques Davielle. Um, prior to 1745, he had published a lot of his reports in the Courrier d'Avion, but he stopped doing that in 1745. And so we really only know about the practice from 1745 onward from a September 1748 letter and then a subsequent letter in July of 1749. But what he tells us in these early letters is that he performed a failed couching in Frere Felix on April 8, 1745. And it was performed when he lived in Marseille. And the first eye couching uh, took a half an hour. It was a very difficult couching. And the word abattre cette cataract is the French for couching. And um, the second eye was lost from suppuration or infection. And so this difficult case forced him to try to think of new ways to perform cataract surgery. And so Daviel tells us that he began performing cataract surgery by a new method. And in fact, um, he developed the method on cadavers while he was there in Marseille. And the seventh case was performed with this new couching method in Marseille on a man who came down from Paris. And this case was done on October 18th, 1745. And we know that it's couching because he says, Jean-Baptiste cette cataract, uh, I couched seven cataracts. So what was Daviel's new couching method? Well, he started to use two instruments instead of one instrument. And here's what he says in 1752 when he writes about it. Uh, I felt then the necessity to test the new way of operating and to compare these different methods. I resolved to practice the traditional cataract operation with two instruments. The first was shaped like a small straight lancet, which served to open the sclera at the usual spot. The second instrument, shaped as a small spatula, was passed through this opening toward the top of the lens to lie between this body and the posterior part of the iris. I was then able to attack the cataract with facility and promptitude. And so since antiquity, it had been recognized that the instrument you used for couching had to be sharp enough to penetrate the sclera, but that if it was too sharp, it could damage the iris. And so beginning the medieval Arabic period, people started to use, in some instances, two instruments, a sharp lancet to penetrate the sclera, and then a more dull probe to actually perform the couching without damaging the iris. So Daviel's method of couching with two instruments wasn't really completely new, but he, he, he claimed credit for it. Uh, even though it had been done in some form since the medieval Arabic period. So Daviel moved from Marseille to Paris and arrived November 7th, 1746. And on June 24th, 1747, Daviel received certificates from the military surgeons uh, Morand and Boucault for cases of cataract couching, which Daviel had performed in their presence at the Hotel Royal des Invalides. And the French is il abattu une cataracte, so he's performing couching. And Boucault actually had been the surgeon who caught Daviel general surgery years previously. Now, who arrives at the Hotel Royal des Invalides in Paris uh, just the next month, just a few weeks later, in July of 1747, Natale Pellucci. He had been training in his birthplace of Florence, Italy in 1744, and later he trained in surgery at Montpellier, and he, he was somewhat of a competitor of Daviel in ophthalmic surgery. And at the Hotel Royal des Invalides, he watched Moran perform cataract surgery, and in Italy, Pellucci had tested cataract needles, which had a conical shape. However, within several weeks of arriving in Paris, Morand had demonstrated for Pellucci a flat and sharp cataract needle, which worked well. And conceivably, Morand could have been influenced from watching Daviel do surgery just a few weeks earlier. And Pellucci devised novel instruments for lithotomy on cadavers with Morand at the Hotel Royal des Invalides. And that's significant because people have wondered where 
Daviel could have gotten cadavers for his work? Did he only have access to cadavers for ex scientific experimentation in Marseille? And if cadavers were available to Pellucci in Paris, conceivably they could have been available to Daviel for a similar, similar kind of experimentation while in Paris. So an important case that Daviel talked about beginning in September of 1748 was the case of the master wig maker, uh, Garion. And uh, Garion was a, a real person, Maître Perruquier, who lived on the Rue Dauphine. He had a son born in 1711, so he was probably elderly at the time of the surgery. And what uh, what Daviel did with, with Garion was to perform a couching, but there were some um, fragments remaining of the lens in the posterior chamber. And so then uh, Daviel made an incision and uh, introduced a needle or aiguille and removed the crystalline lens. And so this is a secondary cataract extraction, not a primary cataract extraction, but Daviel said that this case gave him a grand idée or big ideas about cataract extraction. However, we know from Daviel's unpublished manuscript that he was not performing extractions in 1746, 1747, 1748, or the first half of 1749. So even though the Garion case made him interested in extraction, he didn't carry it out right away. And all we know from this report is that it was done at some point before he wrote about it in September 30th, 1748. And in 1749, uh, in February, Daviel advertised in a Dutch newspaper, the Gazette uh, of Amsterdam, that he was going to take students who were interested in learning uh, cataract surgery. He, Daviel has advertised that surely he will start to offer private lessons on the ocular diseases and that he will teach all the operations which are needed for curing these as well as a new operating procedure invented by him in order to recline the cataract and the use of a new instrument to operate for it. And so that's definitely couching because of the Dutch word used there, lichten. So one question is, did Daviel start extracting cataracts in July of 1749? Now, in July of 1749, Daviel wrote a letter which confirmed that he had been couching cataracts up to that time, with the exception of the Garion case. Now, Daviel's manuscript, which logs his cases, which was discovered in 2004, indicates that other than the Garion case, the first extractions since his 1746 arrival in Paris began July 29th, 1749. And Vermali, a surgical colleague who observed Daviel performing extractions in Mannheim in November of 1750, wrote that Daviel's final Mannheim case was the 23rd case. And if that is so, then Daviel's first case would have been the first numbered case after the Garion case, which, according to his unpublished manuscript, was August 17th, 1749. And so... These are indications that maybe he began performing cataract extractions in, Ju in July of uh, 1749, or at least the summer of 1749. Now, in the first half of 1750, Daviel planned to take a grand tour of Europe. He was going to go through the Low Countries all the way up to London, and then he was going to cross Europe and go through Poland and make his way up to St. Petersburg. And... and uh, perform ophthalmology, he had uh, taken similar kinds of trip through Portugal and Spain decades earlier. And so this was a return to a more itinerant lifestyle for him that he was announcing in the Gazette of Amsterdam, March 24th, 1750. But there are some reasons to doubt that Davio was extracting cataracts in the second half of 1749 or the first half of 1750. First off, he never said that he extracted cataracts in, in, in any part of 1749 or in the first half of 1750. And he never publicly claimed to have performed cataract surgery in Paris, Auxerre, Roy, Peron, Cambrai, Douai, all of these different cities where he later uh, said that he performed ophthalmology, in which he probably did visit, 
but he never publicly claimed to have performed cataract extraction in any of these cities. The magistrate of Cambrai wrote a letter to the secretary of state of that town on May 9, 1750, lauding Le Sieur Daviel, chirurgien et oculiste ordinaire du roi, for succeeding in the vast majority of his operations for cataract inflammation and other eye conditions, but there's no indication there that he's performing a revolutionary new cataract surgery. On August 30th, 1750, the Regensburg newspaper noted that Chirurgien Ordinaire und Oculis Daviel is in Liège and distinguishes himself from many others by his operations on the eyes and in other types of surgical operations. He operates on the poor free of charge and stays in one place until the patients have recovered. So those are all laudatory remarks, but that's not an indication that he's performing a revolutionary new procedure, as the newspapers would very shortly uh, state when he visited other towns. Now, Pellucci uh, is still in Paris, and he extracted cataract fragments on July 3rd, 1750. And this case was very similar to the Garion case of Daviel. Pellucci had operated for cataract on six veterans at the Hotel Royal des Invalides in the spring of 1750, with Morand and Bucco present. And then on May 11th, 1750, Pellucci performed a cataract couching in an old soldier named Charles Pagliano. However, an opacity which Pellucci believed to be the lens capsule returned to the visual axis and was located behind the pupil. Pellucci, on July 3, 1750, used forceps to extract the detached capsule and fragments of the cataract from the posterior chamber after making a corneal incision. And in September 1751, Pellucci drew his corneal incision, which you can see on the figure below. So just after that, extraction by Pellucci, that secondary extraction, Daviel starts to extract animal lenses, and he begins this July 7th, 1750, while he's in Louvain. And he then went on to continue to perform animal experiments with cataract extraction until November of 1750. And this four-month period of animal extraction is the only period of animal experimentation in his log, which covers all of his extraction work, from 1745 to 1752. So that shows that this period from July through November of 1750 was a period of innovation and experimental development for Daviel with respect to cataract extraction. Now, in September of 1750, as we noted before, we enter a period where Daviel is definitely performing cataract extraction, and we talked about the case in Cologne on Gilles Nuprez, performed September 18, 1750, which was noted in three different sources and was a cataract extraction. Daviel then went on to Mannheim in October and November of 1750. He first performed a lensectomy from the anterior chamber in a patient who had had a failed couching some years earlier by a different ophthalmologist, and when the lens had subluxed into the anterior chamber, um, it had caused uh, a visual disorder for the patient, and uh, Willhouse made an incision and removed this, in, this uh, cataract. Now, what's interesting is that he did this in the presence of Vermali, who, according to the historian Vetter, had trained with John Thomas Woolhouse, and Woolhouse routinely would remove the subluxed cataract when it had ended up after a failed couching in the anterior chamber. And so conceivably, Daviel was influenced uh, by, by Vermali or encouraged by Vermali to perform this type of procedure. And after that case, Daviel went on to do three planned primary cataract extractions in three different patients while in Mannheim in the presence of Romali. And the Regensburg newspaper of November 20th, 1750 wrote of Daviel, there in Mannheim, he has already pulled various cataracts completely out of the eye according to his new method. And Vermali described the three primary cataract extractions Daviel performed in Mannheim in a letter published by April of 1751. Now, Pellucci disputed Daviel's priority in September of 1751, and he wrote, Before Monsieur Vermali had informed the public of the prodigious cures made by Monsieur Daviel in the Palatinate, 
by the extraction which he calls a new operation, I had myself applied to it for a long time. We can be sure of this, among other things, by the sixth observation on the soldier Pagliano, which I gave in a brochure printed in 1750. Several experiences which I have made give me the facility of speaking about it. Also, Pellucci suggested in this work that the incision should be made not with a needle followed by scissors, according to the method of Daviel, but rather with a single knife. Now, what's interesting about this is Daviel has never published his method. He's never said that he uses scissors to make the incision. He hasn't published anything about it at all, and Vermali didn't mention that he used scissors to make the incision. So Pellucci knows the specifics of Daviel's method simply by informal communication among the Parisian surgeons, whether written or verbal. And so none of this was a secret. They were all part of a community. Nonetheless, despite Pellucci being plugged into the Parisian ophthalmology scene, Pellucci believes that a July 3rd, 1750 case gives Pellucci priority. Pellucci has no idea that Daviel is going to claim to have done extractions in 1745. We're now a year into this, and Daviel has kept that fact a secret from apparently his close colleagues in the Parisian ophthalmology scene. So from September to October of 1751, Daviel performed 43 cataract extractions while residing in Reims. And then later, Pellucci came through that town and was interested in looking at the patients that Daviel had operated on. And in May of 1752, Daviel wrote in a private letter to Kake, a physician in Reims, that Pellucci was due to pass through that city and would likely inquire about the patients Daviel had operated on. Daviel called Pellucci pitiable and said he typically had to couch patients two or three times and asked that the sick not be entrusted to Pellucci. And then May 26th of 1752, Daviel thanked Kake for showing Pellucci the patients he had operated on in Reims. And Daviel wrote, the senior uh, Pellucci has convinced himself that he has published the most beautiful book in the world, though it is of absolutely no use at all. It is not I who condemns him, but the public. You would come to the same conclusion if you had read the book, though it was not he who wrote it in spite of the fact that it appeared under his name. It is his adopted work, and he would have better done never to have let it appear. This book expresses poor opinions about my method. So clearly, Daviel is no fan of Pellucci. <clears throat> now, as we said, Pellucci believed that a July 3rd, 1750 date gave Pellucci priority. And now in 1752, we're two years into this now, Daviel has a comeback. He says, I have been extracting cataracts on and off since 1745 and keeping it a secret. And so Thomas Hope of England witnessed Daviel perform two cataract extractions in 1752 at some point before September 25th of that year. And Hope wrote that Daviel was the first who in 1745 began to put extraction into practice. And Hope wrote that Daviel had described 115 surgeries, 100 of which have succeeded. And Daviel presented his work to the Academy of Surgery in April of 1752, but we don't have too many specifics about what he said. Conceivably, that presentation was similar to what he told the Academy when he spoke November 16th of 1752, because he presented to them twice on this topic. He did update the numbers for sure, because he said, that by November he had done 206 cataract extractions, of which 182 were successful. And this is when he gave a lot more specifics on his methods, how he made the incision, which is depicted below. And so he's going to great lengths to insist that he began performing extractions before Prolucci's arrival in Paris. And so we can revisit all these cases based on what Daviel tells about them or says about them in 1752. So let's revisit the case of Frere Felix of 1745. Initially, uh, Daviel had written that it was just a bilateral couching, which was difficult and resulted in separation of the second eye. 
In 1752, Davielle adds that after the couching, he incised the cornea with a needle and scissors to remove blood and lens fragments from the anterior chamber. And Hirschberg noted the discrepancy in the accounts and wrote, Davielle apparently transferred in 1752 something that he had experienced at a later operation due to a slip of memory to the operation on the hermit. So Hirschberg, the historian, is willing to say that Davielle forgot what happened. Uh, he's not willing to say that Davielle is telling stories or making things up. Now, by the time of Davielle's manuscript would run through the end of 1752, the unpublished log, Davielle now says that this April 1745, uh, of a case of Frere Felix should be placed on the list of extractions of cataracts from the posterior chamber with the outcome listed as bien réussi. So the story keeps changing. Now, did Davielle perform a series of, of extractions in 1745? When he writes about this in 1752, he says that after Frere Felix in 1745, he did five successful cataract extractions, which do appear on his unpublished list, and then a handful of less successful extractions, which strangely do not appear on his list. He then, in a few weeks, did five of the new two instrument couching cases so that he was able uh, to do the other case that he did, which was using the new two instrument couching case technique in October of 1745. Now, according to Davielle's log, if the October 1745 patient from Paris had chosen to have an extraction, he would have been the seventh extraction. But according to his 1748 letter, the Paris patient elected to become the seventh patient having the two instrument couching technique. He's clearly conflating the techniques. He's trying to pretend that his two instrument couching technique was the extraction technique. And if Davielle had done five successful consecutive primary extractions in 1745, why did he make such a big deal of the Geryon secondary extraction, which occurred before 1748? The Geryon case of a secondary extraction would be much less of an accomplishment than what he had supposedly already performed five times successfully in 1745. Now let's revisit the Geryon case. When Davielle wrote about the uh, wig maker Garion initially in 1748, uh, he simply described it as the case of Garion, the master wig maker on the Rue Dauphine, without specifying the date. But in 1752, Davielle recounts a similar surgery, but he doesn't name the patient. And he says it's a failed couching followed by a corneal incision and extraction of lens fragments from the posterior chamber. This time, Davielle mentions the date, April 8th, 1747, i.e. just a few months before Pellucci arrived in Paris. And Davielle's log confirms that the case on this date was the case of Garion, supposedly. Now, previously, Davielle had not stated how he performed the incision. Now, Davielle specifies that it was made by introducing a needle and then enlarging the incision with scissors. In 1748, Davielle had specified that a needle, aiguille, was introduced into the eye to remove the cataract. In the 1752 version, he, the incision is large enough that he introduces a small spatula, ma petite spatula. In 1748, Davielle just indicated that the crystalline was extracted, but in 1752, he clarifies that the lens had been broken into fragments which were extracted. When Davielle recounts the Garion case in the the quote 1745 extractions he never indicates that he presses on the eye with a finger even though that is part of his current protocol and this is a telltale clue that maybe these cases uh, differed from his 1752 extraction procedure so in conclusion we can say that on september 18 1750 while in cologne Davielle performed a planned primary cataract extraction on Gilles Nuprez, a Franciscan father of Liège. This surgery is the earliest identified planned primary extraction of a cataract in toto from the posterior chamber. It can be regarded as a historical fact as it was reported in the newspapers of the time and from other sources. As to claims that anybody did cataract extraction before this date, whether that be Jacques Daviel, Natalie Pellucci, John Taylor of England, or anybody else. Various claims have been made, but there isn't supporting evidence to document the claim 
to the level that would allow us to say that it's a historical fact. And so we have to regard this September case as the first case, which is a historical fact. Now, Daviel did tell some somewhat self-contradictory stories about his experiences before September of 1750 with regard to the development of cataract extraction. And probably some of that took place because when he was challenged for priority by Pellucci, who said that he did a, a similar case in July of 1750, uh, Daviel wanted to show that his efforts preceded Pellucci's arrival in Paris. And Daviel could have credited Pellucci with performing a step towards the ultimate goal of cataract extraction, planned primary cataract extraction. And Daviel could have said, yes, you, you made a contribution, but I was the one who really took this across the goal line and accomplished that goal. But Daviel didn't want to give Pellucci any credit at all, and, and therefore told a variety of, of different stories about what happened before September 1750. But we really need to regard September 18th, 1750 as the first date that can currently be regarded as a historical fact with respect to um, Daviel performing planned primary cataract extraction from the posterior chamber.